Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Network Engineer Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on top 10 scenario based interview question and answers for L1 Network Engineer. So this is guys part number 2. In part number 1, we have seen question number 1, 2 and 3. In part number 2, we are going to start with question number 4. So what question number 4 says is, a user is not receiving an IP address. How would you approach this? So guys, let's say you're a network engineer and uh, a user comes to you and he's saying that, you know, I'm not able to uh, get an IP address, not able to receive an IP address on my, on my machine, on my Windows laptop or on, on my uh, desktop. So what, what you will do as a network engineer? So whenever the IP is not getting assigned or IP is not getting received, the very first thing that should come to your mind is DSCB. So as soon as the interviewer asks this question, guys, answer him with DSCP. So the very first thing what you will do is to check DSCP server reachability, whether DSCP server itself is reachable or not. So this is the very first thing you will do. The second thing what you will do is you will confirm whether the device, that machine, that user's machine is set to obtain IP automatically. Because a machine can get an IP address in two ways. Let's try to zoom in. Okay, the one way is automatic. The other way is manual. So when I say automatic, that means we are using DSCP. And when we say static, that uh, that means, sorry, manual, that means static. Okay. So, if it is not receiving an IP address, so its best way is to check whether that machine itself, whether the device itself is set to obtain the IP address automatically. So, in, uh, in Windows machine, most of you guys may be aware, under this uh, network and internet network connections, whatever adapter network adapter you have under that adapters property you have this option of uh, networking under which you have this particular option of internet protocol version 4 here you have two options this is one option and this is another option so the first option is for dscp means i i uh, obtaining the ip automatically so this should be on and not this the second option is for manual that is static so you will give this all this IP subnet marks default gateway all this settings manually. So you have to make this second point also check. The third point what you can do is uh, you can check or you can use these commands on the command prompt of any Windows machine that is IP config slash release. So this particular command will release the IP address and you will see some output like this where the IP address will be 0.0.0.0, .0. and after this command if you fire this command IP config slash renew it will it will check with the uh, DSCP server uh, and then it will assign some IP address to that machine. So here the output will be like this. We'll get an IP address, subnet marks, the default gateway, everything from that DSCP server if the DSCP server is reachable. Most of the times the problem is solved over here. I'll say 90% of time the problem is solved over here. The other thing what you can do is to check whether the, IP, the DSCP pool itself have some free IPs or not or whether it is got, whether, whether most of the times it get exhausted also. So you have to check that also. If there is no IP address in a DSCP pool, of course, the machine is not going to get any IP address. So you have to make sure this also. As far as L1 engine is concerned, I think till this point, the answer is enough. But, but going an extra mile, guys, please do remember point number five and six also. That is, if in case there is a DSCP relay configuration, okay, which looks like this IP helper address. So this will be on your uh, on your device, on your networking device. So DSCP relay comes into picture when your 
डीएसपी सर्वर इज इन अदर अनदर सबनेट योर मशीन योर यूजर मशीन एंड द डीएसपी सर्वर आर इन द अनदर सबनेट सो एट दैट टाइम दिस डीएसपी रिले विल कम इन टू पिक्चर सो टू मेक श्योर दैट दिस कॉन्फ़िगरेशन स्टफ इज डन प्रॉपरली द अदर थिंग व्हाट यू कैन डू इज ऑन स्विचेस यू कैन चेक शो पोर्ट सिक्योरिटी शो पोर्ट सिक्योरिटी विल गिव यू basically there is a port security feature if many of you guys are not aware but there is a port security feature on on switches which uh, which which include uh, some um, some mechanisms like you know mac filtering which actually do some mac filtering for security purposes so you have to make sure whether the mac address of that user is getting filtered or not so you can check that stuff also so these are the few things guys which which you can check and give your answer So let's move to question number five. This is again a very, very, very commonly asked question. That is, that I've mentioned it. A user reports he cannot access the internet. What step would you take to troubleshoot? This is a very common issue also, and this is a very common interview question also asked to an L1 engineer. If he's he if he is handling an office network or an enterprise or an campus network. Okay. So the very first thing, guys, if that user is not able to access the uh, um, internet you will you, you you will check the physical connectivity so the physical connectivity will check whether the cable is plugged in or not we will check it maybe sometime you will do it like jack out and jack in of that cable uh, or if it is is using wifi then you have to check whether the wifi is getting properly connected or not this is the first step the second step is you can verify the ip address whether that user is getting any ip address or not now on windows machine the command is very simple ip config so you can go and check whether that user is getting any ip address or not so if it is getting any ip address you will see the ip address the subnet marks and the default gateway so the third step is to check the default gateway because if that particular user have to access anything anything beyond his network the default gateway should be reachable so it's a very 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 important sometimes the user will come and say yeah he is able to access the lan but not not above his subnet okay at that time make sure that the default gateway is reachable if the default gateway is reachable then only he will be able to access internet so this is a very important step and most of the issues get resolved were here again if you give this much answer and if the interviewer is not happy of course he will not be happy so you have to give more troubleshooting steps so the fourth one is very 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 important that is you have to ping any ip but i'll say that you always ping 8.8.8.8 to check Or to test external connectivity, whether you are able to reach the internet or not. So you have to check this particular thing. Now, what is this? This is basically Google DNS primary IP. Okay, so you can you can use this now. In case in an interview, if you are if you are giving this example that I'll ping eight dot eight dot eight dot eight, I think most of the interview will get impressed. and you will crack this question okay the other thing what you can do is check the dns resolution whether whether dns is getting resolved or not you can simply ping any uh, website ip address let's say ping google.com and check whether that google.com is getting resolved or not other other two things what you can check is the proxy settings this is one thing we can check most of the times what happens in that machine if uh, it's a there's a there's some uh, in this window machine we have some proxy settings so you go and check their proxy settings and of course some firewall rules if there are present you have to check that also which may restrict access to the internet so all these things you have to check and even if the issue is not getting solved again you have to give very polite answer to interviewer if i'll try all this stuff if it is not going go going to solve i'll escalate further i'll not waste any time because again wasting time is not the point i'll not waste any time and after checking all this stuff i'll escalate further to l2 engineer or 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 any other engineer who is looking after this issue so this is this is should be your approach so whenever you are giving such kind of interview scenario based interviews your approach will be tested 
let's move to question number six the port is down and there is no light on fiber transceiver what will you check so if there is no light guys 100% of time this is an issue of layer 1 now layer 1 is nothing but physical layer So we say that this is the eleven issue. That is physical layer issue. So whenever we are checking these things now, whenever you have these two things into picture, that is SFP and your fiber. Okay. So you have to check this mostly these two things. So first thing what we will check is this is a very I'll say uh, since I worked in a lot of data centers, I'm aware of this thing that most of the times. This particular point, you know, what I've mentioned over this, these two points, this comes into picture. So you have to, and we have to make sure that the TX, that is the transmit, is connected to RX, that is the receive, on the other end. Use crossover AB patch cord. Straight AA won't work. So what does it means? It means that you know you will have on your patch cord here some marking like this. A, this is A, right, and this is B. So this A should get connected to the other end, to B, and this B should get connected to other end. Let's say this will be A. Now let's say if this is T X, then this will be R X, and if this is R X, this will be T X. So that is what I have mentioned. That cross over patch cord is required. Not straight. A won't work. Fine. So most of the time, when you swap this T X R X, most of the times the problem get solved. If the problem is not getting solved from from this solution, the other thing is to focus on the fiber cable. You have to check whether this fiber cable is having any any cuts, or in case if it is bending too much, if it is having extensive bends on the fiber, that will also cause the fiber to get damaged, and the fiber won't work. So this is one of the reason. Now the best practice, uh, I'll say, is to is to basically uh, use the again to just to replace the fiber cable with uh, with any known good cable. Okay, just to rule out any this fault possibilities. So this is one thing you can do. Other thing what you can do is to check this SFP compatibility. Uh, this is very important. You know, most of the time people are not aware that you know what kind of SFP SFP is compatible with that particular uh, uh, switch or router's model. You know, you have to check that vendor's compati uh, compatibility. Okay, so this is this is very important point. This is very important point, guys. Now the other thing what you can check is you have to check this transceiver type to cable type. So this is this have to match this thing whether this is also compatible with each other or not, because there are multiple cable types. Uh, primarily like you know single mode cable that is SM and multi mode cables. So single mode cables are those cables which uses this lasers. And multi-mode cables are those cables which uses LEDs. Now, since it uses lasers, this single mode cables, so their range is like you can use it for longer distance. And this uses LED, so this is for short distance. Now, how to identify this cable is very simple. Very simple color. So SMF that is single mode fibers, they are in yellow color. Uh, you will have this yellow color over here, and for multi mode, it will be in orange or in aqua color. Color. You many people who are working in the data center might have, or many people who are working in the ISPs also who are having the lab access. They may be aware of this stuff. Or if you're not aware, please make note of this. Okay. Now again, you can check this again compatibility between the trans receiver type and the cable. And again, if it is not working, maybe you can uh, go for the other option that is replace the SFP. Maybe most of the time SFP also get faulty. So you can replace the SFP and check. I think 
if you give this much of answer now guys this is more than sufficient i think so this will test basically you know answering such kind of questions if if that interview ask asking you something related to the port is down you know the light is not coming and you are answering uh, this kind of stuff where your tx and rx stuff and your fiber cable stuff and then uh, you know this single mode and uh, multi mode kind of stuff with the cable colors 100% of time the interviewer is going to get impressed and you will be cracking the interview uh i think i'll uh, have more four questions i think we'll make it in part number 3 of this video it will be better i don't prefer making videos more than 15 20 minutes so uh i think we will uh, we'll continue in part number 3 uh so guys how are you uh, how are you feeling after watching this videos please let me know in the comment section i want your feedback it is it is it is very important because uh, we are making videos uh, like uh for 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 benefiting uh, uh network engineers and uh, we will we will like to have some feedback so guys please give appropriate feedback in the comment section uh you please subscribe if you are not subscribed to the channel because uh most number of the more subscribers it give, gives us more motivation to make more videos so guys i'll stop here i'll catch up in the next video till then bye thanks and have a nice day